It's a day that uh, I will not forget in a very long time. And it's really hard to describe. When gunfire rang out in this apartment block in a Reykjavik suburb, it marked the first time an Icelandic police operation ended in someone being killed. I just, uh, I find it difficult to find words to describe the feeling that were amongst the officers. But I, th I think it's fair to say that one, it was a feeling of, of, uh, of a shock. I think it was, it was a very hard time for us. Uh, uh, we thought it was extremely sad that uh, it had to come to this. As soon as it uh, happened, I, I think uh, the National Commissioner sent out uh, his condolences on, to the family of the, uh, of the man who was, uh, who was killed. This was a major incident because this has never happened before in the whole history of the Icelandic police. And our history, the police history in Iceland, dates back to more than 200 years. I wasn't on call, but I, uh, you know, of course, everybody talked about it. And I guess they, you know, they went through every, every means necessary to, to resolve this without having to fire. But in the end, they, you know, they had to go in. Uh, he shot and, and our officers responded. There was some criticism by, you know, the people that think they know, know the best, which are like non-police officers with a non-police background. And uh, um, I think in the end, you know, when you look at it, everything, I think uh, this was by the book. But then again, for me, it's always like this. If, if the police engages you, be it verbally or, you know, they draw on you, you know, what do you do? You, you just, you know, comply. On average, there are two to three homicides per year in Iceland. We are not used to own guns to point at other people. We own guns for hunting purposes. So people rarely buy weapons to protect themselves. I heard a statistic that there are, you know, about 70,000 registered guns. And meaning gun, it's going to be rifle, shotgun. Mostly rifles and shotguns because uh, you can't really own a handgun here. But uh, gun crime is, is non existent. In Iceland, even though you have a gun, you will have it locked in a secure place. You will have it in the garage somewhere. It's not supposed to be accessible at all times. But in America, you have handguns and they are supposed to be accessible at all times. The police here, they are uh, un unarmed. The general feeling amongst the public in Iceland is that. The, the police should not be armed. In Norway, after the incidents in Paris and then in Copenhagen, they sort of rose their security level. So all police officers started to carry weapons. And I, I haven't seen actual studies, but I have heard figures from colleagues that number of accidents just exploded. In terms of like safety of the public, I mean that, that's I mean that, that's that's the thing that's going on right now. It's always going to be related to the downtown areas and some of some also foreign influences influences the different kinds of social backgrounds people are bringing in. We still have the characteristics of a small community, but you know tourism has increased a lot. While we don't have the necessary you know accommodation for everybody, uh, everything is becoming a hotel. Every stream or piece of grass is becoming a, you know, a tourist attraction. Yeah, that's, 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 that's just how just how the area, uh, the community is. It's... Magnus Cross Three Five Two Grower X Five Leugavegur Motu Santolt. The society in general is quite equal, so I don't have the exact figures, but the uh, proportion of poverty is very low. When you look at traditional media, you look at traditional media as portraying the police, what you see is a lot of police cars, you see a lot of, uh, especially in the US, you would see a lot of arrests and suspects and all that stuff. Uh, even though you have sort of images that uh, number of crimes is quite high in America, uh, when you take into account per capita numbers, it isn't so high and it has been dropping dramatically for the past 20 years. But when you ask police officers to show what they think is important around police work, they'll usually show you people, 
Uh, they won't show you gadgets or gizmos or police cars. Or, those are all extras. Policing is a, is a trust-based entity. It, it uh, revolves around the trust that the uh, public has in our work. And, and uh, if they trust us, they call us for assistance. If they trust us, they provide us with information. And, and that is key to uh, the police being able to do its job. Well, social media is one of our uh, biggest tools in, in uh, maintaining a conversation with our public. Our Instagram account was started in 2012. The advantages are that we can run our own site, we can, we can have our own voice on, on social media. Uh, but I think it's very, very uh, nice to be able to kind of uh, make it possible for the public to see police work through our eyes or our, through, through our lens. I think what I love about being a police officer and, 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 and like about my job is, is the contact with people. I think it's a very uh, humane profession. I, I think that it revolves around uh, having, having a relationship with other people. And a lot of the times, a lot of our work gets, um, doesn't get a lot of credit and doesn't actually get shown anywhere. I think most of us really don't care about that. It's about uh, the help we get to deliver and, and, uh, and our part in kind of trying to um, make society a little bit better. You know, bad things happen, and if they happen, I want to be around to work it out. And just, you know, that's, that's when I'm at my best, so to speak, you know. It's kind of hard to explain to people that this is something that you want to be in, but I guess it would be good for us to have somebody that wants to work through this job and wants to handle the, handle the bad things for other people. This is law and this is order. We're here to, to maintain, maintain this and enforce the law, so uh, it's basically a, a huge part of my life.